Now, as you know, uh, the Israelis and the Palestinians are engaged in the second round of direct uh, talks trying to revive uh, the, the moribund uh, peace process. Um, it, today uh, is the 20th of September. We're about five or six days away from uh, the end of the so-called settlement freeze that Prime Minister Netanyahu put in place. Uh, and it seems pretty clear that, you know, settlement activity will continue. And uh, the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has said that, that it, should settlement activity continue, that he would walk away from the talks, etc., etc. We've seen this script before. What, what is your view? For, for Americans who may not know what's really going on in Israel, uh, or may not know how to understand it, what is your view of the settlements and the settlers? How are we to understand who they are and how this issue has become such a sticking point in the possibility of, of peace and a two-state solution? Well, um, historically speaking, the settlers live in land that was occupied in uh, the Six-Day War of 1967. Um, so that's what now, uh, well over More 40 years, years ago. Yeah. Um, and so there were parts, chunks of land occupied from Jordan in the east, Syria in the north, and Egypt in the uh, southwest. With Egypt, it's been resolved in 1979. Um, and, well, with Jordan, we also have peace, but the chunk of land that was taken is still this unresolved area uh, called, um, well, the West Bank is one part of it, it is, and another part is the Gaza Strip, which was uh, it is on the other side, and that was part of Egypt before. So those two comprise um, the Palestinian territories, and Israel chose to, to settle there against uh, all international law, specifically the Geneva Conventions, which forbid uh, an occupying uh, power from um, um, uh, settling its own citizens into occupied territories. Right. Uh, now Israel did this for several reasons, you know, people can speculate on all the reasons, but the situation uh, today is that these people serve two purposes. One is a religious purpose, which uh, they believe in certain you know, religious um, uh, prophecies uh, that include those territories which are divine in their sense. Mm -hmm. um, and another one is just a political, um, um, territorial um, aspect, which has many implications. For example, an important aspect is, is that of water. So a lot of the, so the area, as many people know, the area is very, water is very a scarce uh, product, and it's, uh, most of the area is desert, actually. Um, and actually, most of the water reserves turn out to be under Palestinian territory. So giving back uh, Palestinian territory to Palestinians, having them rule the land, means that they would also be in charge of the water. That's just one aspect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and that's very important for Israel. Uh, but another aspect is just the land itself and the ability to, to, to settle a lot of people for cheap in those areas. Yeah, B'Tselem says, the human rights, uh, Israeli human rights group says, that uh, about 42% of the West Bank is now under settle, settle, settler control. Is there any chance, do you think, do you see uh, that those settlements being dismantled in some kind of peace process? Um, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't see that happening. And that's why I think that the whole talk about peace process, um, you know, coming and going, and now there is a round of talks, and before there was a round of talks, let's look at the big picture. So this has been going on since 1967. The peace process formally began, I think, sometime in 1991, when there were beginnings of discussions in Madrid, and then formally the peace, uh, the, there was initial, an initial signing in 1993 under President Clinton in September, so that's, uh, what, 17 years ago now. Um, not much to, and, to, to offer, uh, uh, you know, not, not, not much has happened in all those talks. Well, since then, if you ask the average Palestinian, since then, his or her um, um, life, um, quality of life has uh, really deteriorated, because since then, uh, a wall has been constructed that uh, separates that crawls in Palestinian territory 
and um, uh, really um, uh, takes chunks of their territory and goes, uh, separates one Palestinian from the other um, in many areas. Um, and so their access also into Israel has been virtually eliminated. Uh, their contact with each other has been eliminated. Um, their resources of income have been eliminated because they used to work in Israel and earn a salary, and that's no longer the case. So actually, since 1993, their uh, quality of life has deteriorated. So if you look at the big picture, it's, it's, it's in, the, in an incline. So these sporadic talks of, of, of a you know, revival of the peace process, that's just to keep people probably primarily in the U.S. and in Europe, kind of at bay and like, you know, kind of calm saying, well, okay, there's peace negotiations and we're trying and we're doing our best. Um, and to be honest, I, I had um, great hope with uh, Obama when he got elected. I thought that um, uh, there was a lot to be achieved here, but... Um, more and more, I see that um, while maybe him personally, he um, is not a bad person, there are greater mechanisms mm -hmm. here at work um, which are hard to, to go around. Um, so what, what do you think Obama should be doing, in, in your view? Well, again, I'm an Israeli, so let me not say what Obama should be doing. As an Israeli, uh, what would you like Obama as, to do? As, so, so, that too. So, so, so that's problematic. Let, let me let me say what what I, I think should be done, and if uh, Obama can do it, or preferably the people in the region can do it, because in the end it has to be up to us to finish this. Um, so, in the end, what should happen is that um, people, all people, should first of all be given equal rights, because. Um, there are certain rights which are undeniable, certain human um, and civil civic rights which um, every person uh, deserves. Um, now, whether this is done in the context of one nation, state, country, or two, that's a separate issue and that uh, will have to be resolved. If not now, then in 5, 10, 20 years. Unfortunately, the way it seems right now is that um, if things keep on going the way they're going right now, um, Israel is headed for destruction, one way or another. You mean because of so demographics? Because of um, everything. So while demographics, I, I, I don't really like that term because that term... Um, suggests, you, you don't mean it in that way, but it suggests in, in Israel it has a racist interpretation, a racist, a racist interpretation. Um, and that interpretation is that Israel is a Jewish uh, state, whatever that means, I'm not sure exactly, but for many people what that means is that um, there should be a solid Jewish majority. Um, so, uh, um, well, that's the that's, definition of, of Israel as a Jewish majority state. Um, no, that's that's not written anywhere. It's it's uh, the definition is a Jewish state. So it's up to you to decide what a Jewish state means. Good point. Very good point. Um, so uh, that's as much as uh, uh, you know. Someone could uh, say that the U.S. is an Anglo-Saxon country, and so anyone who's not Anglo-Saxon is a threat to the you know demographic of yeah. the United States, and that of course would be a very uh, racist uh, thing to say. So, and as well too, I do believe that um, in the end um, there is the indigenous population, which is the Palestinian population, with some uh, Jews who live there, including my family, who's been there for nine generations. Um, but we cannot disregard the, the Muslim and Christian indigenous populations. And uh, if, they, uh, if they end up uh, being a majority, then they are a majority. Um, and uh, you can define your state to be uh, Jewish or whatever you want to define it to be, but um, the majority may not be Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that we'll have to come to terms with. Yeah. And for many Israelis, that'll be tough. Yeah. So the way things are headed right now, 
um, that there, there's so much mingling of the two populations, the, the, mostly via these settlements, which are really inside the Palestinian territory and a, an obstruction to any solution which would say, okay, there's one people here and another people there, and here is a border between them. Um, because of these settlements, everything is mingled and there's no way of doing that. Um, and if, if things keep on going uh, uh, in this direction, then I think already, right now in the general region, the populations are roughly the same, maybe 45 to 55 percent, something like that. But within, it's a matter of just a couple of years that it'll be 50-50. Mm -hmm. And then you can hide it in all sorts of you know statistical maneuvers. You can... Uh, say, oh no, there's this number of Jews and only this number of non-Jewish people. But in the end, the numbers will be revealed. And you can deny people their rights, you know, of voting. So, you know, in the parliament, uh, these percentages are not going to be uh, reflected. Um, but still, in the end, down the line, um, this is going to... Um, Mean that we yeah. are a country where there is a minority ruling over a majority, and that can—that's just not something that can right. survive. Well, one last question for you, uh, and a quick one. Um, you know, with all that's going on, and with the pessimism that's in the air—not just here in the United States, but obviously amongst the Israelis and the Palestinians, and really throughout the world about the possibility of some kind of peace uh, process, you know, actually coming to fruition. Uh, what do you think that, that people, young people around the world, and especially young people in the United States, can do to foster peace? Yeah, so I was, I was referring from saying what Obama should do, and, uh, but, but here I, I do think that, that a few words can be said. Uh, what I've been advocating here at Brown, what I've been working with other people here, have been doing a really great job, is f as a first step to advocate for people to just learn about the situation, just to know the facts, so as we were talking about them earlier. Because um, many times people don't know the real facts and they're deceived by you know, various um, media sources and uh, other outlets where you don't really hear the, all the facts. So that's the first thing. The second thing is once you realize what the facts are and you realize, as an American, let's say, as a young American, you realize that you are somehow involved in this. You're involved in this in the sense that Israel is one of the most highly supported countries by the U.S. and U.S. tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So any American, his or her tax dollars are going into Israel. Um, or uh, American corporations which have enormous ties with Israel, uh, both militaristic and otherwise. Um, so realizing that and taking the further step of may perhaps demanding that you know whatever institution you're at if you're a student in your university if you're an employee of a company then maybe your company um, you know detach these ties or try to um, only keep to humane causes in terms of you know, what investments they have for example Brown University what the endowment is invested in, um, so students here are actually demanding from the university to 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 not invest in any unjust causes. So, not just Israel, but other. Yeah, too. Just to be clear, so are you supporting the notion of divestment from from Israel? A lot of universities are 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 pushing for that. Yeah, I think that that's a non-violent, um, non. It's it's not um, the same as. Um, 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 as uh, 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 some other forms of action, which uh, um, you know, against Israelis specifically. Here, it's just saying, okay, these are some actions which we do not agree with. We do not agree with how these American corporations are behaving and investing their money. So we do not want to invest in them. It's the same as some people don't want to go shopping and. Uh, at Walmart, for example, because they don't believe in the practices. So it's just the same thing. Um, I think that's that's uh, uh, the right thing as a consumer. That's the right mm -hmm. action. Well, Jonathan Ben Artsy, thank you so much for speaking to us at Aslan Media. We really appreciate it, and good luck at Brown. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, we hope to hear yeah. from you again soon.